whatever. They owe me nothing. They might say this sucks. It's horrible. It tasted bad. I couldn't feel anything. It gave me diarrhea. And so if you want the honest truth from an impartial source, this is it. Coach Greg, in today's video, do you lack the energy to go to the gym? Are you looking for something to get you amped up, to get you in the zone so that you can have a more effective workout? Well, two pros, they purchased pre-workout 2.0 and they put it to the test. They use it not just once for a day, but they use it for several weeks to get a great understanding of whether it's effective, ineffective, the pros, the cons, everything you need to know about pre-workout 2.0. And we agree to take them and offer our honest opinion about them, but we will not take any sponsorship from them or any sponsorship money. And so they refuse to be sponsored. They're not taking sponsorships. I've never spoken to either of them ever. And so they're giving their honest, unbiased review of what the supplement did for them. These two are two different flavors. But this is the stimulant version. Both of these are. And there's a non-stim version. And so the first thing you need to know is they have the stimulant version. We also have pre-pump for those of you training later in the evening. You don't want the caffeine, the stims, the energy, but you do want the pump. You want to get that great feeling in the gym, but you want to be able to go to bed. Now, I don't suggest you take a pre-workout if it's within six or even eight hours of bedtime. You do not want pre-workouts to negatively affect your sleep. Personally, if you want to make the pre-workouts even more effective, try avoiding consuming caffeine at any other time throughout the day. I used to be a caffeine junkie. I was drinking about one gram of caffeine a day, having two massive cups. I'm talking 24-ounce cups of coffee each and every morning. And so what I did was a 30-day caffeine detox. It sucked donkey balls. I hated it. Felt like garbage half the time. But once I came back to drinking caffeine, I felt so much better because I didn't need as much. And so, for example, it's noon right now. I haven't had any caffeine. And before I go to the gym, I only need to take a half dose. I don't need a full dose. I used to take the max dose and still wanted more, but I was used to taking all that caffeine. And so when I take a half dose, I can feel it very strongly. I don't need nearly as much and I can get a better night of sleep. And one more thing to note is that we have the itch and the non-itch flavor. Remember Derek and Sean Naljewick making fun of beta alanine saying, oh, it gets you an itchy butthole and no one wants that. Well, guess what? I made some of my pre-workouts that contain beta alanine because we all, well, not all, 90% of us know just how effective it is. Derek doesn't understand that. Sean Nalajewicz doesn't understand. But they didn't actually understand all the research that was presented. Oh, it only helps people in exercise bouts of over a minute. Yeah, right. Have you not considered that when you're doing supersets or you're going from one machine to the next, that you're actually buffering lactic acid? that you can actually benefit from buffering lactic acid, that taking beta alanine allows you to go harder than last time. So yeah, if you're a power lifter, you do sets of five or less, and you take a nap for 10 minutes between sets, you don't need the beta alanine. But if you're like Coach Greg, I do a full body workout. I'm going from one machine to the next. I highly benefit from taking beta alanine. If you're doing high rep sets, drop sets, and so on, you're very likely going to be approaching that minute, and you can benefit tremendously. Not to mention, if you do cardio, you're racing bikes, and so on. So beta alanine, highly effective supplement. And those tingles, yeah, I feel a little bit, not much. Perhaps the first time you've ever used it, it's going to feel like a lot. But my recommendation is start with a low dose first, and then build yourself up over time. And in case you're wondering, the ratio sells 10 to 1. 10 times more people on my website are purchasing pre-workout that contains beta alanine than those who don't. We're going to talk about first the mixability of the product. And so mixability, it's given a 9.5 or a 10. You pretty much can't get something that mixes better than this. You're not going to get a thick, chalky bottom that you have to continue to mix up. The stuff mixes very well. You can taste it in the air. The stuff's amazing. Trust me. And if you don't, trust them. Let's talk about taste. But what about the taste? To me, taste paramount. I don't want to chug back something I don't like. 
And so almost equally important to if the stuff actually works, does it in fact taste well? If it doesn't taste good, are you really going to want to use it? When it comes to taste, for me, honestly, Sandra really likes the uh, dragonberry. Uh, I like the pink candy blast. It honestly tastes like, to me, a Starburst. It's hilarious because, of course, it tastes like a Starburst, but we couldn't say Starburst. You can't copyright infringe other companies. So, yeah, we call it Ping Candy Blast because we couldn't call it Starburst. Does that make sense? And so me personally like the Dragonberry flavor way more. But in sampling these things out, obviously I give these to a ton of people before we even try them. I say, rank your favorites. What does this taste like? They do the same thing with protein bars. I've got six different protein bars in the kitchen. We've got various kinds. And I'm like, well, yeah, it tastes like a Mars bar, but I can't put Mars bar. I can't call it a Milky Way. It tastes as good as that. It tastes like that. But we need to come up with a more clever way to advertise the protein bars in a way that we won't get sued. And so sometimes the name, perhaps it doesn't make a lot of sense, but remember, we can't just call it the way we want it. Uh, it doesn't have like an after fake sugar taste that some ah. have, so um, it's kind of a treat to drink it, honestly, before the gym. You don't feel like it's just something that you have to drink, get it down, because it's not really pleasant, and this actually tastes good. So it's a little pre-sugary workout drink. Yeah. That. Yeah, oh, that's a great Very point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there is no weird aftertaste to it. That is a great point. I like, absolutely. If these pre-workouts didn't have stimulants in them and I could just drink them, I would drink it like Kool-Aid. I would put it in my water ball, in my glass. I would drink it all the time. It would be just a flavored drink that I love to consume. But because it has caffeine, stims, and pump products, then clearly I can only have it before to go to the gym. And I really look forward to drinking it because it tastes amazing. And once you taste it, you can feel the beta alanine, the caffeine kick in. You drive over to the gym. And by the time you get to the gym, you can't wait to work out. For me, the pink candy runs, I think I'm going to give it an 8.5. The only reason I'm not is because I want to give room for some of the other flavors that I haven't tried yet. I agree on that, and only because it's a little oversweet yeah. for me, but not to where I'm like going to stop taking it. So Yeah, yeah. And so they gave it an 8.5 out of 10 on the taste, and they said, well, it's maybe a little bit oversweet. That's how I like it. Remember, I made these for me. If you happen to like them, well, that's a bonus. But I love things that are really sweet. And I don't like drinking a pre-workout with two ounces of water. I'm not dry scooping. I want a big glass of water. I want to enjoy it, and I want it to be sweet. And so if you find it too sweet, well, perhaps add in a little bit more water. And guess what? That is actually what you should be doing. You should be drinking two cups of water before you go to the gym. Remember, when you're dehydrated, your athletic performance, it goes down. And even being dehydrated by 1% can result in a 2% decrease in performance. And so think of it. You might not sound like much, but if you're in a bike race and you expected to do that route in an hour and it took an hour and one, You'd be highly disappointed. 1% dehydration. Imagine if you're 2, 3, 4, 5% dehydrated. And so I entered a bike race yesterday and I was a little dehydrated, suffering from some diarrhea, got a bug, but said, hey, I'll race anyway. Guess how I did? I got 15th place out of 18 riders. Normally, I win a race like that. And if not, I'm in the top three. I got 15th. I was two minutes behind the winner. Two minutes on a 50-minute race. And so if you're dehydrated by 3%, 4%, imagine how huge a difference this can make. So you go to the gym, you drink extra water to stay hydrated, because when you get there, you're likely going to start sweating. If you're training harder than last time, who doesn't sweat? And so be sure to consume plenty of fluids before, during, and after your exercise. And while training in the gym, I personally am using pre-pump because I like continuing my pumps. I do 30 minutes of bike riding as a warm-up. Remember, I care mostly about cardio. Weights for me is a bonus right now. And so following my bike ride, I drink some pre-pump. It gets me even more pumped up while I'm at the gym. Not saying you need to do that, but that's what I do. Another suggestion, Perilite, kind of like Pedialyte, helps with hydration. And unlike Prime, this actually has sodium to help with hydration. And so if you want an actual hydration drink, you know, to help you stay hydrated, to replenish the sweat that you're losing, and that contains 8 grams of EAs and BCAs per serving, that's right, 8 grams of protein, then look no further than Perilite. Anyone doing long bouts of cardio or perhaps training in the weight room for over an hour and a half, you should be adding something like 
like this, it's a must. If not, very easy to suffer from dehydration and declines in performance. Interested in these products? Remember, code GREG, 10% off. Now let's talk about value. And so what about the value, the cost? Is it a ripoff? Is the price appropriate? Let's see what he says. Now, these are $59, I believe. So I think if you're taking three scoops, you're gonna get 20 servings out of that. Mm -hmm. um, so value-wise, I'm gonna say for me, you get what you pay for, right. okay? Um, look, guys, you can go to Walmart and buy all that garbage they have there. You get what you... And so basically says, look, you get what you pay for. Yes, there are cheaper products out there. You can go to Walmart and get something cheaper, but you're not going to get what you're getting here. And so if you want quality products to give you the best possible workout, then this is what you need to get. So it doesn't make you crash. Oh, you know? great point. Crash. And what about crashing? Is this going to get you through your workout? Are you going to feel like garbage after your workout? But then yes. That give you a do -do 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 up there and then... Like, I don't know, C4 was one of our favorites. Yeah. And the only thing I noticed with that, it made us crash. Yeah. And yeah, it was just too much. Yeah, it really did, as a matter of fact. Um, let, let me just say this. Uh, Greg, by the way, great job on the taste, great job on the mixability, great job on the value, the performance. And so far, great job on taste, value, performance, great job everywhere, okay? What's he gonna say about the no crash? And when, and when it comes to performance, that is a marvelous, marvelous yeah. uh, point there. That is, the, that, that is true. That's one thing that we've actually had conversation about is these don't pick you up and then drop you off. I haven't noticed that drop off. And given all of the years and all the things that we've Try used and workout. tried, so many. <laughs> um, this is by far the the best, it, it's uh, by far the most digestible too. And so he says, by far, this one is the best. By far, this one, pre-workout 2.0, the best. The guy's been training for 40 years. He also says this is the best for his digestion. He has no issues with pre-workout 2.0. But That's what it, is. it doesn't drop you off yeah. and it doesn't tear up your stomach. So it really, really is good yeah. on your digestive tract. I have not had any. And so there's no crash falling exercise. It doesn't mess up your stomach. And so he's clearly very happy with this product. Let's talk about performance. Tell me about what you notice in the gym. Okay, so I've been really sluggish with, before this pre-workout and uh, the beta alanine, I think is what's helping me, alanine, alanine. It's uh, making me push a little harder. Um, I get more blood flow, so that's a good thing. I'm pushing more weight with more reps, which is yeah. super important. <clears throat> and it's really, I, I believe it's only got 300 grams of um, caffeine in it. Isn't that correct? And so performance-wise, getting more reps. They're liking the beta alanine at only 300 milligrams of caffeine. We're not just overstimming you. A lot of companies just ramp up the caffeine more than last time. Caffeine is excessively cheap to add in a pre-workout. And so if you want to make a lot of money, just dump in a shit ton of caffeine because it's dirt cheap and then mark the price up. People, wow, oh my goodness, 400 milligrams of caffeine per serving. Yeah, but what else is there? It's just caffeine. Caffeine is cheap. You can add a caffeine pill if you want it. Me, personally, I prefer less caffeine and more of the other products. And the other products are what's actually adding to the cost of the product. And so don't just look at a pre-workout by how much caffeine's in here. The caffeine costs almost nothing. Look at every other ingredient and just consider, yeah, you need some caffeine. Obviously it works, but you don't want too much. I notice a great stimulation from the caffeine, but then I also notice that I get a really good sweat going. But this, I mean, it's not crazy where you're just blowing sweat. I'm not talking about that. It's you get that glisten going, your body, you can tell your body is really cranking, man. Yeah. And you get that engine feeling. And by the time you get into that workout, I'm gonna tell you something, it doesn't take long to get that blood pump in and get that pump going quickly. If you're one of those guys that wears a pump cover, Guys, you're gonna have that thing off quick. And so you take this product, you don't need to wear a pump cover for half an hour. You get in there, one set, you're good to go. Skin's glistening, you're feeling it, you're revved up. You're able to train harder than last time from the get-go. Once you get your warm-up done, of which I suggest everyone gets in a warm-up, as soon as the warm-up's done, you're good to go. You're gonna feel the pump just from doing your cardio. Performance, I'm gonna say for me, um, out of 10, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a nine. Yeah. for me um 
we were really into the C4 for a little while, and we tried them all. Mm -hmm. uh, we liked the C4 for a little while, but this actually tops C4 to me mm -hmm. uh, in performance by a pretty good margin. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying their favorite pre-workouts from the past was C4, but this tops it by, in fact, a fair margin. This, to me, is a Cadillac version of pre-workout. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You know, I mean, it's a little more expensive. You get what you pay for. And so he says, essentially, this is like the Cadillac version of pre-workouts. It's slightly more expensive, but certainly worth the money. And um, we're going to keep using it. Yeah. So we'll actually pay for our stuff the next time when we're getting low because I really like the product. And so clearly he says, I'm going to be buying this in the future. I've used this for three weeks. Usually after seven to 10 days, it kind of drops off. You get used to it and you're like, eh, I don't really like it anymore. He says he's used it for three weeks. He's going to continue to buy this in the future. Loves it, says I outdid myself. And so happy to hear this is his favorite workout, beat out C4, his former favorite. And looking forward to seeing what he thinks of GO2 Max. Imagine he liked this pre-workout so much. Imagine once he uses geo2 max imagine how good he's gonna feel and so of course if you're interested in pre-workout 2.0 or if you'd like the pre-pump with no stims or if you're more of a stim junkie you want the hardcore pre-workout that's for guys that really want to be amped up we have the hardcore version and if you're not looking for a stim but you want better cardio better endurance and decreased blood pressure cholesterol perhaps live a longer life then look no further than go2 max the main ingredient nmn you know how well it's been researched been spoken about on the joe rogan podcast banned by the fda on amazon wonder why works amazing and remember it's not banned by water it's not some crazy jug it's quite literally in food creatines in food they haven't been and creatine from Amazon. And so NMN, it's just in two small quantities in foods. And so you now have it in a pill. Remember, they've done double-blind, placebo-controlled human studies to show just how effective this is in the real world. Interested in this, any of my supplements, click the link in the description, code Greg, 10% off. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost that algorithm. Have you tried it? What would you like me to do next time? Also, watch one of those boobs and cookbooks and newly released hot off the press cookbook 3.0 be sure to get that and until next time i am out